Hey guys, Chita Fahadangs here with the last chapter in module one. This time, we'll be talking about aspect ratios. If you parachuted onto this video, go back and watch the other four. Chapter one explains how the anamorphic cookbook works. Chapter two is about how anamorphics boost your production value. Chapters three and four go over how these lenses came to be, plus offer a light intro to their inner workings. As part of Atlas's support to this course, we have a live Q&A with founders Dan Keynes and Forrest Schultz coming up soon. So make sure you post your questions on Discord and we'll get them covered live. Now for chapter five. There are already plenty of videos and discussions on the topic of aspect ratios. I'll borrow a few key points here and there to connect the dots. You can find a few links in the video description below this chapter, including one that's absolute nonsense. It's even more nonsense that this is the number one result on the YouTube search. You can fight back the misconceptions by liking this video right now. Your aspect ratio is the result of dividing the two dimensions of your screen, width and height. Dividing the width by the height, you'll get the frame's aspect ratio. As simple as that. To illustrate things, the first aspect ratio we'll talk about is 4 by 3. The 4 by 3 representation can be further simplified by dividing both sides of the ratio, the semicolon, by the number on the right, so 3. 4 divided by 3 equals 1.33, and 3 divided by 3 equals 1, so 1.33 to 1. This means that for every one unit of height of the screen, there's an equivalent 1.33 units in width. If you have a screen with the height of one meter, the width will be 1.33 meters. The screen is about 30% wider than it is tall, and that scales up proportionally. Up until the arrival of sound in 1927, since the film area was mostly square, projection screens and TVs follow the same rule, averaging on a 4 by 3 aspect ratio. Once sound became an integral part of movies, the soundtrack was recorded directly onto the film, taking a chunk of what was previously reserved for pictures. This narrowed the aspect ratio to 1.17 to 1. Very square. Then CinemaScope came around in 1952 and doubled the width of the screens while keeping the same height, turning 1.17 to 1 to 2.35 to 1. The screen is now 235% its height. The screen actually got bigger. It doubled in size. It was massive, especially when compared to the previous size or television, allowing for a much more immersive experience with the film filling up all of your peripheral vision and enveloping you in the story. In the years that followed, there were plenty of other numbers to play with widescreen pictures. The Robe, the first film shot in CinemaScope, actually had a 2.66 to 1 aspect ratio. CinemaScope 55 for The King and I had 2.55 to 1. Ben-Hur is a full-blown epic with 2.76 to 1, and the list goes on with various ratios between 1.96 on VistaVision and 2.76 to 1 on Ultra Panavision 70. Ultra Panavision! In 1957, the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers, also known as SMPTE, brought down the hammer on the whole thing and said 2.35 to 1 was the only way to go. 20-something years later, in 1973, the SMPTE declared 2.39 to 1 would replace 2.35 to 1. Since then, 2.35 to 1 was no more. This change meant reducing the height of the projected area rather than extending the width. I find it fascinating that we still talk about an aim for 2.35 to 1 delivery in the indie world though. We also do that other thing where we round 2.39 to 2.40, and that tends to drive more experienced cinematographers insane. Decimal cases are very important to the SMPTE, and we must not cut corners. But it's okay to cut the top and the bottom. So we have arrived at the standard 2.39 to 1 aspect ratio for anamorphic widescreen. 
time to tear that idea down. We'll start with Mommy, directed by Xavier Dolan and shot by Andre, Andre Turpin? Turpin? Andre Turpin? Directed by Xavier Dolan and shot by Andre Turpin. Released in 2014. Andre, if you're seeing this video, I'm sorry if I butchered your name. The whole film has an Instagrammy aspect ratio of one to one, and it switches twice for a widescreen format. One of these moments is triggered by one of the characters literally pushing out the edges of the screen. This inventive use of the aspect ratio, which until then was considered to be a never changing trait of films, contributed to Dolan taking the jury prize at Cannes Film Festival in 2014. I also did that on my channel trailer, but no one gave me an award for it. But even before that, we've seen aspect ratio changes within a single film a lot more frequently. It's quite common in Christopher Nolan's work, which also has been extensively reviewed as he mixes anamorphic 35 millimeters and IMAX 65 millimeters, but doesn't discard any parts of the image and doesn't worry about keeping a consistent aspect ratio through his films. Except in some versions where they keep a constant aspect ratio and some versions where they don't. And that is in a sense, technically, redirecting the movie. These changes in the shape of the screen reflect in our perception of the environment, as well as our perception of time setting. For example, the Grand Budapest Hotel features three different aspect ratios defined by the more commonly used aspect ratio at the time period each part of the story takes place. The clever use of this resource helps with immersion in the story. Lastly, shooting anamorphic doesn't mean delivering 2.39 to 1. There are lots of projects shot on anamorphics and delivered for 16 by 9 TV, like some of True Detective, Fear the Walking Dead, and The Alienist, or with different aspect ratios for creative reasons, like Beautiful in 2010, which mixes spherical and anamorphic, as well as 1.85 to 1 and 2.39 to 1 aspect ratios. 2 to 1 is also a very popular aspect ratio these days. Proposed by Vittorio Storaro, DP for Apocalypse Now and three times Oscar winner, 2 to 1 would be the ideal ratio for projects shown on both big and small screens. When I was at NAB in 2019, I went to all the booths that featured anamorphic lenses. I mean, what else could I do, right? The most insightful information from my questions came from PS Technique. When I asked their reasoning for making lenses with both 1.5 and 2 times squeezes, we'll get to squeeze factors in a little bit, hold tight. Their answer was, before you choose your lenses or any equipment whatsoever, you first have to decide the format and the frame of your project. Meaning the aspect ratio is your first creative call when starting to think about how to shoot any film. From there, you decide your camera, sensor size, and lastly, the type of lenses you are using and how their characters add to the story. If you're just getting started, look into other films that tell stories that are similar or connected to the one you want to tell and study their decisions. Characters are better framed on taller screens. Environments play better on wider screens. Clients now always want vertical and one-to-one -one frames, too, for social media and advertising. Just because you're shooting scope, it doesn't mean you can't deliver aspect ratios different than 2.39 to 1. Looking back, it's easy to notice anamorphic widescreen has served best stories with epic settings and fantastic worlds, where being immersed in that huge screen and seeing all the environments surrounding the characters adds to the experience of going to the movies. Dan Mindel, Mindel, DP for Star Trek, Star Wars The Force Awakens, and The Rise of Skywalkers also raises the point that 2.39 to 1 shape creates opportunity for lower ceilings and for adding a lot more texture coming from the top and bottom of the frame. I find it curious that it's the format of the screen that has created this subconscious connection with images being more or less cinematic and not the sense of immersion itself. If you think of the origins of widescreen, the whole idea was to show more of the surroundings to immerse the viewer. Now with our 16 by nine screens, showing less of the surroundings is what makes the story cinematic. Just food for thought. 
With this, we get to the end of our foundation module in the Anamorphic Cookbook. Thank you for watching and thanks to Atlas Lensco for sponsoring these videos. If you're enjoying this type of content, please click the like button. In case you didn't notice, everything in this module was shot using the Orion series and I love how the image turned out. To wrap things up, we'll have a Q&A session with Dan Keynes and Forrest Schultz covering the subjects discussed in the last five videos. Subscribe to get a notification. While the session will be streamed for everyone, only members of the channel get to ask questions and interact with what's going on in the conversation. I should remind you that members of the channel unlock extra cookbook content and support, such as PDF guides and an exclusive Discord server to discuss our anamorphic experiments for only three bucks a month. To become a member, click the join button under the video and see a detailed breakdown of your bonuses. If you have any questions about aspect ratios or module one in general, please shoot them in the comments below so I can take them to the Q&A. I hope you had fun. See you soon in module two. Chit the feathers out.